Welcome to Swamp Shangri La, rural living here in the heart of the South Carolina Low Country. Tis the season for firewood cutting, folks. It is a nice, cool little weather front we are having this fine morning, and we do not have to deal with the 100 degree plus heat that we have been dealing with. That is unseasonably warm. Seems like every year it's unseasonably warm. So, what are we getting into today? We're going to swap out chainsaw bars on the 661. We're going to be putting a 25 inch bar on. We're going to be showing you, the chainsaw owner, the fastest way to do it and to make sure you have good tension on your bar and you have an operational configuration for your chainsaw. Stick around. Good stuff coming. Okay, gang, you're going to need one tool to start this operation. Scrunch. Screwdriver on one side wrench on the other scrunch steel uses the large end the 19 millimeter side right here if you were using this on a husqvarna it uses the small end 13 millimeter side this will correspond right here to your bar nuts on your chainsaw so we're going to go ahead and break this plate loose and you'll see what i'm talking about here it's just lefty loosey, righty tighty. One loose, two loose. Now, these larger chainsaws from steel have these retention nuts, as you can see, they're sleeve nuts. So that's how they work. So we'll go ahead and pop this up. We can put some hand protection on. Since we have sharp components on this bad boy. And we'll go from there. So you can see that comes off. And we have some nice crud in here we need to get attention to. Get some of that out of there. But overall, for the amount we've been using this thing, not too bad. But you can see what I'm talking about. It has these retention sleeve bolts right here. So you have the heart of the beast right here, guys. You have your sprocket. You have everything you need right here. So we are going to go ahead and just lift this off. Go ahead and take that off. And there it is in one nice uniform piece. And that's how we'll store it. We'll put that back in a sleeve jacket and be done with it. So, we have a new chainsaw bar. Right here. We have a steel rollomatic. And if you get a close-up right here of this bar, you can see where we have it, where it's marked out at 25 inches. So, that's to let you know it's a 25 inch bar. Now just as a little bit of, uh, I guess you could say, input for you. A lot of times also, lumberjacks, you'll see them, they'll flip the chainsaw bar upside down, back and forth. Generally as a rule of thumb, whenever you sharpen your uh, chainsaw chain, flip the bar over. Flip it back and forth for even wear on that bad boy and that's what you want so you have the cogging mechanism right there okay now let's talk about your chainsaw chain you can see a chainsaw chain right here guys and let's talk about this because this is very important just like when we're talking about bandsaw bands and the like you got one direction and one direction alone that this thing can run okay so you see on the top you have a unique tooth configuration you have right here this nice little tick coming up that is commonly called a raker and right here you have your main chainsaw tooth blade what you want is for the raker right here to be in front of that tooth 
That is what you want for our configuration. So we are going to go ahead and get this back. You might have to release some of the tension. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So you turn a left and you'll notice the whole assembly turning back. So we go ahead and get this chain placed in the bar, right in the guides. That's where you want it. Put some hand protection on because teeth have a tendency to be a little bit sharp. Tension it on out. You can do a lot of your fine tuning right here, guys. Makes life a lot easier for you. A couple little guide blocks is all you need. And you can see sometimes steel has different configurations on their sprocket wheels. Sometimes you have star sprockets, sometimes you have guide sprockets. This is a guide sprocket right here. So it's a little bit different. So we have that set up for preliminary. Go ahead and put your bar nuts down. Get a little bit snugged up. Go ahead and take that block out of there. And all you need is a just go ahead and while it's not too snug, check the tension on your chain. You don't want it overly tight, but you don't want it overly loose either. That's got some decent spring to it, and I think that'll work out pretty well. So it'll be just right. So we'll go ahead and pop the front one down gently. Pop the bottom back one. And you don't need to really put a lot of force on these, but you want them in a good, snug tight configuration. And there you go. So you see we got a good snap on the chain. No worries. Next thing we're gonna do, gang. Yeah, spin this bad boy around and we're going to go ahead and prime up the fluids on it see if they need to be primed up bar oil you can see you can stand to have just a shade probably put in there it doesn't really require a lot just a little dab will do you so we got that little dab when you get into these larger chainsaws guys and we got plenty in there, it's overflowing. We got these larger chainsaws, you'll get high volume oilers on these professional saws. I always use premix fuel, 50 to 1, 40 to 1. Steel has a good uh, brand out as well. And I always use premix purely because you get a lot of gasoline anymore. It's got ethanol in it, and ethanol is not good for small engines. You can get some uh, good racing gas, things of that nature. It'd be about 115 octane. You know, you go ahead and cut it, the required cutting, things of that nature. And it can be good. It's quite pricey. Uh, you can get non-ethanol gas at some locations. But um, I just find it more convenient in all reality. And the true irony is, is I've, you know, they always say, get your fuel out of your saws when you're not using them. Well, you can see here at Swamp Shangri-La, we always use them. 
Now we'll go sometimes a little while about using them, but there's one thing I can safely say. Whenever I use pre-mix, I don't know what it is about it, but I can literally not use a chainsaw for months. And there's fuel in there. I go ahead and cycle it a few times, do what I have to do, and it will crank over. It's pretty easy, please. But, so, you can see pretty much that is a little bit of a nutshell how to do it. And so, we're going to go ahead, put it in start configuration right here. Our engine compression is down. So, probably stand to go ahead and tighten the chain up just a shade bit more it's always good to cycle your saw that way you have a good idea what you're coming across so go ahead and break the nuts loose just a shade Too much. A little bit better. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and bump this thing over one more time, gang. That way. Let's go ahead and check it out. Remember to check your decompression, make sure it's off. And that's livable. So, that's a nice little fast and easy way to go ahead and swap out the bar and your chainsaw. You can put an 18 inch bar, you can put a 20 inch bar, whatever floats your boat. This is 25 again on this bad boy. And you can run a pretty good sized bar on a 661. But again, whatever you encounter with a chainsaw, if you need something that's got some length to it, by all means do it. But if you just are cutting smaller pieces, you don't need something so unwieldy. Unless you just want to swing it. That's just personal choice. But we hopefully, this has been a good uh, little video for you. And hopefully you've captured some more knowledge. So we'll see you on the next one.